it was just another event as far as I was concerned. The, the, uh, you've got to remember there wasn't all that furor and uh, everything. On, I mean, there weren't televisions there or anything, you know. It may have been just another event in 1948, but 64 years later, London is pulling out all the stops to host its third Olympic Games. The Olympics had grown massively between 1908 when L London first hosted them and 1948 when they came back. They'd grown into a genuinely global event rather than just a very small international one. 1908 had many firsts. It was the first Olympics to have a purpose-built stadium. Athens was a reconditioned one, Paris and St. Louis used existing facilities. And for the first time, national teams were formally represented. The athletes all marched in behind their flags. 1908 was the first time that national teams were formally represented. Up till then it had been a bit ad hoc. So there was a, there was a march past, there were flags, there were banners, and they all stood and lined up in front of King Edward VII. But no, compared to the spectacles that go on now, that's very much a product of the um, really the 1960s and 70s, and then things have got more and more spectacular since then. Even though there was a stadium built in 1908 that was considered state-of-the-art back then, George Whedon, a 1948 Olympic gymnast, still envies what athletes have today. All this foam and everything just, well, it doesn't, it doesn't lands on the head and it doesn't mean anything. You know, it's a, it's a different ball game. I mean, everything is, I mean, the floor is covered about 10 inches of foam and matting, and I did my landings on coconut mat. Mr. Whedon may not have had a chance to participate in Olympics with state-of-the-art venues or even a glamorous opening ceremony, but for London 2012, he was honored to be a torchbearer. <laughs> As London gets ready to host its third Olympics, some markers are still around on the grounds of White City Stadium of 1908. They put a few markers in place. So for example, on the outside of one of the BBC office buildings, there's a big uh, commemoration with the Olympic rings at the top, listing all of the, the medalists and listing the countries and how many they won. Of course, it's the only time Great Britain uh, beat the USA in the Olympics, the only time Britain won. Then just away from that, on the floor, they've got a piece of text marking where the finishing line for the Olympic Stadium was. So it's like a piece of public art in the pavement. With exhibitions and tours happening all across the UK, one curator thinks it's time for London to make some new history. As a modern collector, you can collect digital items as well as physical items, your programmes, your tickets. For, for, for Philatelist, the envelope that the tickets came in is a collectible item. So, but it's up to individuals what they'd like to collect uh, just to preserve their memories, things to show the grandchildren in the years to come. For the Wall Street Journal, this is Dipti Kapadia in London.